نحمده و نسلی على رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل عقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعن لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طیبا و عملا متقبلا اللہم الہمنا رشتا و عزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Today we shall continue the discussion of verse 36 of Surah An-Nisa. Allah says, وَأَبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Worship Allah and associate nothing with Him and do good to parents to the relatives, orphans, the needy, the near neighbors, and the neighbors far away, the companions at your side, the traveler, and those whom your right hands possess. Indeed, Allah does not like those who are arrogant and boastful. So yesterday we learned that Allah, first of all, as his rights over the bondsmen are concerned, he gave a do, wa'budullah, and a don't, wala tushiku bihi shayya. And after his right, the first right was, wa bil walidaini ikhsana, that do good and ikhsan with your parents. Now, after this comes the right of whom Allah says, وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Do good to whom? Three people have been explained here. The relatives, the orphans, and the needy. And today we shall be talking about the rights of these three sections of the society. Dil Qurba, we mean the relations of the kin, our near and dear relatives. Quran, in more than one verse, multiple verses and multiple surahs of the Quran explain us the rights of the relations of kin over all of us. Verse number 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah highlights and explains a covenant which was taken with the people of Bani Israel and these are the ten commandments which were given to Hazrat Musa a.s. Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَ مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاقِينَ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا Allah says, Remember what? With Allah accepted a solemn pledge, a covenant from Bani Israel. Worship none but Allah and do good to your parents to the relations of kin, to the orphans and poor, and speak kindly to all the people. Then in the first verse of Surah An-Nisa, we've already gone through that. And if I revise, it was said, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ Fear Allah in whose name you demand your rights from each other and the bonds and ties of the relationships of kin. Then in 
verse number 27 of surah al-baqarah allah while talking about the disobedience the fasikun at the disobedience allah says who are they allazina yanqizuna ahdallahi min ba'di mithaqihi wa yaqtu'una ma amara allah bihi an yusala wa yufsiduna fil arz ulaika humul khasirun these are the people who are the losers so these disobedients who are the losers they do what allah says who break the bond with allah who break the covenant of allah and then they do what they swear what allah has ordered to be joined what has allah ordered to be joined the relations of king and what allah has forgive for forbidden to be severed is the bonds of the relations of the blood relations and the relations of the womb and then in verse 90 of surah nahl allah has highlighted the three do's and the three don'ts of quran and allah says inna allah ya'murukum bil adli wal ihsan wa itai dhal qurba wa yanha anil fakhsha'i wal munkari wal baghi inna allah there is absolutely no doubt that allah enjoins upon you number one justice doing good or ihsan and spending that is generosity towards your fellow beings and allah forbids you what is shameful and allah says the other three things are told which are the don'ts of quran so these are the highlighted three do's of the quran and then in the verse number 177 of surah al-baqarah where allah highlights the concept of being virtuous the concept of being of piety is what allah says laysa al-birra an tawallu wujuhakum qibla al-mashriq wal maghrib walakin al-birra man amana billahi wal yawm al-akhir wal malaikati wal kitab wan nabiyyin wa ata al-mala ala hubbihi dhawi al-qurba wal yatama wal masaqin allah says that true piety or true virtue is not turning your faces towards the east or the west but the true piety or the true virtue is one who believes in allah the day of resurrection the angels the revelations that is the book of allah and the prophets and the concept of piety and the concept of virtue as per the definition of virtue and piety after belief allah says what wa atul mala ala hubbihi dhawil qurba wal yatama wal masakin and he spends his wealth for the love of allah upon whom upon the relations of kin for the orphans and for the needy and for the poor so now if i sum up the message of all these four or five verses which i have recited and which i have translated i think i can and you can all of us we can summarize that if we want to fulfill the covenant or the pledge of allah we want to come up to the level of a god fearing person and if we want to obey the do's and don'ts of allah and if if we want to be virtuous and if we do not want to be one of the disobedience then what do we need to do we need to maintain the bonds of the kin we need to be kind we need to be generous we need to be helping we need to be caring we need to be loving and we need to be merciful and good to the relationships of kin 
Now, I will be, I will be reading out and I will be narrating a few ahadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make us understand how important it is to maintain the relations of kin and how how very very important it is to stop and to refrain from severing the relationships of kin Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reported in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said qala Allah ta'ala man wasalaka wasaltuhu man qata'aka qata'tuhu Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah the rahman says that i shall keep connection with who keeps connection with the relationships of kin and i should sever connections who severs the connections of kin similar words are also reported by hazrat abdur rahman bin auf radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in abu daud and he says that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the mother's womb in his hand and he addressed it and he said that i am the rahman i am rahman the merciful and this rahima that is the womb of the mother allah named it as a rahima this is connected with me and then allah subhanahu wa taala said man wasalaka wasaltahu man qata'aka qata'tuhu whoever will join you i shall join him and whoever will break you i shall break him when allah comes to join somebody he can join him with his blessings with his bounties with his quran with his guidance and when allah comes to break or when allah decides to sever somebody he can cut off his sustenance he can cut off or he can sever him from the source or from the root or from the channel of guidance from the connection of quran so this is the importance of maintaining the relations of kin and then hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and hazrat jubair bin mutim radiyallahu ta'ala anhu they report in bukhari and muslim that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la yadkhulul jannata qati'un whoever violates the rights of kinship shall not go into the into the paradise la yadkhulul janna if prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us that that the person who is going to sever the relations of kin will not be allowed or permitted to go into janna do you think he'll be able to enter the paradise hazrat anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in bukhari and muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever wants to increase his sustenance i suppose we know that everybody would want to do that whoever wants to increase his sustenance and that the marks of it of his feet remain for a longer time in the world that is he lives long so if somebody wants to increase his sustenance and his worldly worldly wealth and riches and he wants to have a long life what should he do he should be kind and he should be helpful towards his relatives so relatives and the relationships of kin they are who are responsible and who will be decisive of whether we will be permitted to enter to janna how long we will live and how much of sustenance will we be will we be blessed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hazrat abdullah bin umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam telling us the way one has to maintain the relationships of kin is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the one who joins ties is not truly the one who reciprocates a kind act of the relative but the one who joins the ties is who joins the ties even when the other severs them so we, if you're just reciprocating 
then this is not actually maintaining the bonds of kin prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked that tell us the deeds which will take us to paradise and he said feed the poor and hungry join the bonds of kin promote the salam and offer the sala when people are sleeping when salatu tahajjud then you will enter paradise so maintaining the relationship of bonds will help a bondsman enter paradise and any person who is going to sever the relationships of bond la yadkhulul janna hasan abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in muslim that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked by a person one of his issues in his dealings with his relatives he said oh messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i have relatives now you must have a keen ear to what i am going to tell you because this is an issue which many of us might be facing so he said that oh messenger of allah i have relatives with whom i try to keep in touch but they cut me off i treat them well but they are they are abusive to me and i am patient and forgiving towards them but they insult me now kindly instruct me what should i do the narrator says that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised that if you are as you say meaning that you whatever you are claiming that you are behaving in this mannerism then if it is actually true if you are as you say then it is as if you are putting hot ashes in their mouth and allah will continue to support you as long as you keep on doing this and similarly in tirmizi there is a hadith that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said what is the way of he was asked that what is the way of saving our hereafter and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told the person who asked that you maintain ties with the one who severed it with you you give it to one who deprived you and you forgive the one who wronged you so this is actually the mannerism and this is actually the level we are supposed to maintain the relations like in a hadith narrated in bukhari prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever believes in allah and the day of judgment should maintain good relations with his relatives so it is a matter of perfecting our belief and faith also there's another hadith in bukhari when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a muslim is not allowed to abandon or to severe relationship with his muslim brother for more than 3 days so it is not permissible in islam and then another hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if a muslim severed ties with another muslim brother for a year that is for full one year without any rhyme or any reason they are not on talking terms then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is as if they have shed each other's blood did we realize how how important it is and how forbidden it is to sever these bonds in another hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said two muslims who have severed their relationship when they meet the one who proceeds in salam will be closer to the blessings bounties and player of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So the one who proceeds with salam and lets go his all his the thing he was angry on and the thing they were fighting with each other about and then there's a beautiful promise of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith that he said that when two muslims they had severed their relationships of kin with each other then the one who settles the quarrel he will be rewarded with a palace imagine he will be rewarded with a palace in the heart in the center of the jannah rabbi ibni li 'indaka baitan fil jannah 
Allah says, Wasul hu khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us all understand all this. Help us all remember all this. Help us all believe all this. Help us all act according to all this. So it was, it's not just the words of the hadith which is going to tell us all this. I'll be narrating some incidents of the Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah as well. How did he behave and how did he relate with his relations of kin? We see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying for his relatives. He used to pray for Hazrat Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu to embrace Islam. He used to pray for his uncle Hazrat Abu Talib to pray to accept Islam. And then his, his cousin, his paternal cousin Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu who was the son of his Uncle Hazrat Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and who he prayed for him and so many so many times did he pray for them when he was born Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas when he was born his mother came and she put the baby laid the baby in Prophet sallallahu lap and then he prayed for him Allahumma faqihu fiddeen O oh Allah bless him with the knowledge of the religion of Islam then when Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas with his father migrated from Mecca to Medina. On receiving them, Prophet ﷺ hugged him tight, held him close to his chest, and he was he was supplicating, Allahumma fakkeh fiddin, O oh Allah, bless Abdullah bin Abbas with a deep sighted knowledge and comprehension of Islam. Then a night when he was staying with the Prophet ﷺ at his home, he got up at the time of Salatul Tahajjud, then, then he held him close to his chest and he prayed, Allahumma faqihu fiddin. And you know what? The supplications and du'as of Prophet Sallallahu for Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas were accepted. And he was called as the Hebrew Ummah, the scholar of the Ummah of Prophet Sallallahu So, that is what we need to do for our relatives, pray for them. Because you know the best the best gift a Muslim brother can give his Muslim brother is the gift of a dua, the gift of a prayer or a supplication. Then Prophet was so loving and caring and kind and protective and tolerant and merciful to his relatives. I I can narrate that incidents of the Prophet ﷺ with one of his uncles after the Battle of Badr. In the Battle of Badr, there were 70 Makkans who were killed and there were 70 who were taken captives. And one of them being the uncle of Prophet ﷺ, Hazrat Abbas ta'ala who He had not accepted Islam till then. And the companions narrate that it was the night after the battle that we were we were observing that the Prophet ﷺ was not comfortable. He was restless. That is, he was just turning and tossing and couldn't just sleep. And we asked him that what was the matter and why was he so upset? And Prophet ﷺ said that it is because I am I'm getting upset because I I am listening to the mourning and the cries of my uncle Abbas and they are making me restless and upset. I would stop here. I would stop here and, and tell you who he was. An uncle, an uncle whom Prophet ﷺ had been inviting for belief and for faith and him had been inviting him towards Islam for the last so many years and he had rejected the invitation of his nephew. Not only this, that he had not just accepted the invitation of Prophet ﷺ for embracing Islam, he was among his bitter enemies. From all the way to Mecca, he had come with the Meccan army to fight to actually fight with the Prophet ﷺ, his companions. This 
uncle when he is crying and when he is upset prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is upset and he can't sleep he's sleepless we just need to stop and think what are we doing where do we stand do we know do we know who of our relatives is upset do you do you or i we know or we try to find out or are we aware of who amongst our relatives of kin have been crying through the night and if if we know that any of our relatives is upset then how upset are we how sleepless have we been because of the anxieties and tensions and distresses of our relations of kin and then we claim we claim to be the people of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we look forward to the intercession of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of resurrection prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so upset and the companion said that what we did was that we just let hazrat abbas loose and we opened up all the chains and then obviously he stopped immediately till the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked he inquired why is he silent now and the companion stole that thinking about your discomfort and your being upset and your anxiety and your sleeplessness we released him and we've opened up all the chains now remember what justice what remarkable justice prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and he ordered now either you chain him up or you let loose or you let loose all the prisoners this is a remarkable justice and then what happened the next morning hazrat abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala and who was all injured and bleeding and all his clothes were torn so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the people of madina anybody to give him his clothes but he was very tall and nobody's clothes would fit him and has prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's uncle was given his clothes by abdullah bin ubay the leader of the hypocrites because he was tall also and then you know what happened after quite a few years when abdullah bin ubay died his son came over to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he requested him to give his shirt for the coffin and for the funeral of his father fearing about his father's hypocrisy and fearing about his life after he asked he requested the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to give his shirt and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took off his shirt and there was hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he said oh prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam are you going to give your shirt to a person who was a hypocrite who was the leader of the hypocrites prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh umar don't you say that you know abdullah bin ubay gave his shirt gave off his shirt to my uncle abbas when nobody's shirt would would fit him what is this this is open heartedness and open mindedness and this is acknowledging the goodness and the kindness of a person and not just only acknowledging and accepting and mentioning and talking about the kindness of somebody but in fact repaying and returning the kindness of the person who was kind to us and more so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is trying to repay the kindness of a person who was kind to his relatives even what are we doing there are times in our life when we get so when we get so hard hearted and we get so tight allah said wa may yuqashuh an-nafs fa ulaika humul muflihun we get so tight hearted and so narrow minded that we 
we stop acknowledging what kindness anybody has done to us let aside repaying the kindness we don't even we don't even have the heart to accept to acknowledge and to mention the kindness somebody did to us this is the model of excellence of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then i read about the conquest of makka when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is riding the camel the she camel and he was entering makka can you imagine who was sitting behind him this was like one of the biggest days the biggest success in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 8 years after migrating from makka he is walking in as the conqueror of makka couldn't have been a bigger achievement couldn't have been a bigger day of success for him and behind him on his she camel is whom the son of hazrat abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu his paternal cousin this is the message of what and how we are supposed to relate to our relatives and we see in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam him giving importance to his paternal relatives conquest of makkah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in his house the house of hazrat umm hani radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and she walks in and she talks to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and explains her situation that she has given shelter to one of the few makkans but but her her brother hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he is taken out his sword he is hanging them on their heads and he is saying that he is going to cut off their heads he is going to behead them and help me because i have i have given them promise i promised them to give them shelter prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whom o mehani has given shelter we have given shelter we shall provide shelter to the person whom ummehani has promised to provide shelter teaches us the importance of women in islam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the patience had the time to listen to a muslim woman he had patience he had the time he had the tolerance this was like and this might have been like one of the most busy days of his life but he had the patience and the tolerance and he gave enough the time to listen to listen to his she cousin and he would honor her he would respect her there are so so many incidences in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he is being seen giving importance to his paternal relatives but today very very pathetically what i highlight that moms of today what they are doing is that they they try to pump their children against against her in laws believe you me this mother this mom who is pumping their children against her in laws in envy in hard feelings is the worst enemy of her children the mother the mom who develops a feeling of hatred who is developing and who is instilling hatred in the hearts of her children against her grandparents their their paternal grandparents the sole purpose of whose life is now to pray for their for their grandchildren the worst enemy of the children is their mother who is poisoning their minds and their brains against the paternal aunts and uncles the sincerest relationships on the earth why can we get sincerity can you buy love out of money and then we say the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not only relating to his maternal or his paternal relations of kin we see him being good and kind and polite even to his in-laws hasat isma radhiyallahu ta'ala anha she was his sister in law and there so many times when he used to go to her house he used to advise her he used to instruct her 
there, there, there's an occasion when he's talking to Hazrat Asma and he's, she was spending and she was taking out the money from her kitty and then she was, then she was counting the remaining and then she was counting what she's going to give. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instructed her to be generous. Stop counting. Allah will stop counting. And stop stopping. Allah will start stopping. So instructing her to be generous. Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar, Hazrat uh, Isma radiallahu ta'ala anha was the sister of Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and she was uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi sister-in-law. And then Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was the brother of Hazrat Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha and the son of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he was the brother-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi We find so many times that he is coming over to the house of his sister and visiting the Prophet and we we go through a, a hadith in Bukhari when Prophet was asking him to start reciting, to start offering the Salatul Tahajjud. And then in Bukhari we see we read of an occasion when Hazrat Maimuna Raziallahu Ta'ala and has nephew Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas is staying over for the night when Hazrat Maimuna Raziallahu Ta'ala and has was she was having a turn of the Prophet ﷺ staying at her place. So this is the open-mindedness. This is the love. And this is the justice. And this is the kindness with all the relatives. Now, before I proceed, I would want to highlight and I would want all of us to understand that who actually are the relations of kin. They are our blood relations. They are the relations by the womb of the mother, the mother, the father, brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, may they be paternal or maternal, and the nieces and nephews. So these are the relations of the kin which I'm talking about, or the Quran is ordering us about. The next we all need to understand, I'll be highlighting a few points that how do we need to relate and behave with them. First of all, we need to spend on them, give them our hard earned money. It is an order of the Quran. As I just recited the ayah, وَآتُلْ مَالَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَىٰ giving them money, spending on them, being generous on them, just sheer out of the love of Allah to the relations of kin. So this is an order of Allah. And Allah says, as we read, we just went through the verse number 90 of Surah Nahal, Itai Dal Qurba is one of the Do's of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى حَقَّهُ That give your relations and your relatives as if it is their right. It's as if it is their due right. So what do we give? We give them the zakat. We give them zakat. If any of our relatives of kin are needy and secondly, righteously deserving of zakat, then the first right of anybody's zakat will be for his relations of kin. When it was asked in Surah Baqarah, Yasaluna Kamaza Yunfikun, they asked what must we spend and whom must we, uh, must we spend on? Yasaluna Kamaza Yunfikun. Allah said, spend on your parents, on your relatives of, and your relations of kin. So if they are needy and they are duly and rightly deserving of zakat also, then they have the first right of zakat. Now here I would want to clarify another point as well that there are certain scholars today who are saying that a man cannot give zakat to his relations of kin. No, it is not so. 
there is a specific circle obviously when whom he cannot which is the circle the circle around a man of the people for whom it is obligatory for him to fulfill their economic requirements like a husband is supposed to fulfill the economic requirements of his wife and her and his children similarly a man is duty bound and it is he's he is it is obligatory for him to fulfill the requirements of his old parents the mother and the father or his sister who is divorced or widowed and she comes back to him so these are the duties of the man and it is obligatory for him to pay for all of these so this circle obviously since it is obligatory for him to fulfill their monetary requirements then he will not be giving zakat to any one of these in this circle but other than this circle outside this circle if it his his brother he can give zakat to his needy brother his uh, poor uncle his deserving niece or nephew he can definitely give zakat to any one of them again i repeat if they are needy and if they come up to the merit of a person who is who deserves zakat and who can take zakat or who can be given zakat but on the contrary a muslim woman who in islam has been allowed and permitted to have property and wealth of her own if she is giving zakat out of her money then a muslim woman as she it is not obligatory for her to fulfill the economic needs of anybody around her she has no economic commitments whatsoever according to islam so since she is not she is not supposed to pay for anybody then if she is paying zakat out of her wealth she can pay to any person a woman can give zakat to her father to her brother to her husband to her son to any any relative around her provided the person is needy and deserving of zakat and it is not my opinion i will narrate a hadith has abdullah bin masud's wife there was prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting with his companions that a companion came and he asked that a woman has asked that she has to pay zakat and would it be permissible for her to pay zakat to her husband's children that is to her step children prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the person who was questioning that who is this lady he said it is zainab prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam further inquired which zainab the person said zainab who is the wife of hazrat abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam understood precisely who she was then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said tell her she can and then he said he added that tell her that if she spends on his children then she will be rewarded she she will have a double reward she will be rewarded two folds one for paying her zakat and spending her wealth in the path of allah and the second will be to support her relatives so a muslim woman can spend zakat on any of the relatives around her but the man beyond that circle which i have explained can definitely give zakat and allah when says wa ita idhal qurba haqqahu we have to or we are supposed to give it as if it was their due right now the next thing is that if they are not they do not come up to the merit of a person who can be given zakat or who can take zakat then if they are needy and they are in an economic crisis then we can give them the supero catri supero catri charity or sadaqat which is beyond zakat and if they are not even needy and they do not need our zakat or sadaqat and they 
they're affluent and they're affording, even then we spend on them. And we spend to give them gifts. For Prophet ﷺ said, Tahabu wa tahadu. You interchange gifts to increase the bond of love amongst each other. So exchanging gifts, give them gifts. So this was the first thing which we need to do with our relatives. Giving them money in any form or the other. Then giving them time. We need to give time to our relatives. In the world of today, we have time for everything in the world. Going about in the shopping malls, doing winter shoppings, going about, dining out, hoteling out, eat as much as you can and what not. Going about, socializing to our friends, going about, see the world. But in the world of today, in the selfish, in the conceited, in the egoistic, in the self-centered world of today, we don't have time for our relatives. Give them time. Give them importance. Like the incidents of the Prophet ﷺ, you've heard. Give them time. Give them importance. Pray for them. Make dua for them. This is the best gift. Just think, when was it? When was the last time I actually prayed for my brother or for my sister or for my niece, my nephew, my uncle or my aunt, the way I pray for myself, the way I pray for my son or my daughter, the way I pray for my husband. That is the way we pray for our intimate family. Do we ever take out time? So we need to pray for them and remember them in our prayers and our duas and our supplications. Then we need to give them. What are we giving them? Number one, I repeat again, give them your money. Give them your zakat, give them your sarkat, give them, give them gifts, give them time, give them importance, give them dua and give them advice. Give them your heartfelt, sincere advice. Give them guidance. Be sincere to them. Give them your help. Give them your support. Give them your love. Give them your care. Extend helping hands. Be caring, be kind, be loving, be generous. Be tolerant. Be patient and be merciful, but do not do what? These were the do's I said. This was the list of do's we have to do with the relatives. And now the list of don'ts. Do not misbehave. Do not mistreat. Do not be ill-tempered. Do not be bad-mannered. Do not make fun of them. Do not call them with bad names. Do not slander, do not backbite, do not dishonor them, do not hurt them. There are so many hard and cruel things a relative can do to a relative. We do not have to do any one of that. We have to put a stop to all of those. <coughs> Allah, help us remember all this. Help us remember the importance and help us believe the importance of all this. Help us adopt all this. Help us adopt all the do's and help us stop ourselves and help us refrain from all the don'ts. Help us be merciful and kind and polite and soft-hearted and generous and sincere and loving and can and caring and merciful to all those relatives around us. And then Allah talks about wal yatama wal masakin and the orphans, 
the orphan children, the orphans and the poor. This is what? This is what Allah is talking about the underprivileged section of the society. This is where Allah is highlighting the rights of the weaker and the poorer sections of the society, the have-nots of the society. Being merciful to them. Prophet Sallallahu said in a hadith, Allah shall be kind and merciful on whom who is kind and merciful to others. And then Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith, He will be deprived of mercy who is not merciful. So being kind to this deprived section of the society is extremely important. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, he who fulfills the need of any of my people to make him happy. You see, there's a person who is fulfilling the needs of a deprived person. Why? Just to make that person happy. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, truly he makes me happy. And he who makes me happy, me means what? The Prophet ﷺ. He who makes me happy, in fact, makes Allah happy. And he who makes Allah happy, Allah will make him enter paradise. So nothing short of paradise is being promised for a person who is kind, who is merciful, just to make one of Allah's bondsmen happy. There are so many words of the Prophet ﷺ which would make us understand the importance of being sensitive about the rights of the widows, of the orphans, of the poor and of the needy. Hazrat Abu Huraira narrates in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever whoever strives to relieve a widow, a distressed and a needy is like the one in divine reward who does jihad continuously in the path of Allah. He is the one who fasts permanently during the day and like the one who spends the night in prayers. Now you see, these three, like continuously doing jihad and permanently fasting days on an end and making salah throughout the night without sleeping, these are the things which no person can, humanly it's not possible for any one of us to do. But the person who is who will work or to strive or struggle to help to relieve a poor and a deprived will be rewarded by by the by the reward of a person who will be doing all this so you see our religion and the teachings of islam are not just about worshiping allah Islam is not just commanding us to say our salah, to be, to be fasting, to be performing hajj or paying our zakat and sadaqat. It's not just about that. These all physical or monetary worships are, you know, actually what? They are actually the means of training us of educating us to be the actual believers, to be the actual mu'mineen who are going to be, who are going to be sensitive and who are going to be careful about the rights of their fellow beings. Like there's so many ahadiths of the Prophet where he talks about the rights of the orphans on all of us. 
To start with Surah Ma'un, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَرْعَيْتَ الَّذِي يُقَذِّبُ بِالدِّينَ فَسَالِكَ الَّذِي يَدْعُوا الْيَتِيمِ Have you ever seen, have you ever come across a person who just rejects, who just fails to accept the concept of the day of resurrection or the day of judgment? He just doesn't believe on it. He is the person who shuns on the requirements of an orphan who refuses to pay or refuses to help or support or be kind and merciful to an orphan. So a person who is shunning the requirements of an orphan is like the person who is might not be actually rejecting and might not be actually not believing in the day of the judgment but he is like a person who is just not bothered about the day of judgment he by his behavior and he by his dealings to the orphans is is actually showing that he is just not bothered about the day of the judgment and about the questions of the day of the judgment has a sahal bin saad radiyallahu ta'ala and who in narrates in Bukhari that the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever supposes an infant belonging to his own or any other family will be as close to me in heaven as these two fingers are to each other. And the narrator said that he put his index finger and the middle finger very close to each other with a little space to show how actually how close the caretaker and the supporter of this orphan would be on the day of the resurrection or in Jannah with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Allah make us one of them. Hazrat Ibn Abbas who reports in Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu said that the bondsman who took an orphan from among the Muslims and shared his food and drink with him, Allah would allow him to enter enter paradise provided that he was not guilty of an unpardonable sin one of them being polytheism finding partners with Allah Hazrat Abu Umama Bahali radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in Mustad Ahmad and Tarimzi that Prophet sallallahu said if anyone stroke an orphan's head if anyone stroke an orphan's head doing so only for the sake of Allah he will have blessing for every hair over which his hand passes. And if anyone treats well an orphan girl or a boy under his care, then the promise to the guardian is what? Again in these in this hadith, he and I shall be like these two fingers in paradise. Subhanallah, what remarkable reward has been promised to the guardian who cares and who loves an orphaned girl or a boy. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu said he commented that the best of Muslim homes the best of Muslim homes is the home in which an orphan lives and he's treated in a loving and affectionate manner. And the worst of Muslim homes is the home in which an orphan lives and he's treated badly and harshly, ill-treating the orphans, makes our house, makes our home a bad home in the eyes of Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu Reports in Musnad Ahmad that the Prophet said, a, pe a person came over to the Prophet and he complained to the Prophet that he had a very hard hearted nature and he asked that what should he do? Prophet advised him to stroke the head of an orphan and feed the poor. So, this is what it is all about the have nots of the society, the deprived of the society, the underprivileged of the society, to be aware of their condition, to find out about their requirements, to help them, to support them, 
is what will will what will help us perfect our faith perfect our belief prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has made a, a huge promise hazrat ibn umar radhiyallahu ta'ala who reports in bukhari and muslim that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a muslim is a muslim's brother he does not wrong him or abandon him and if anyone cares for his brother if anybody cares for his brother's need allah will care for his needs if anyone removes his brother's anxiety allah will remove from him one of his anxieties on the day of resurrection and if anyone conceals a muslim's secrets allah will conceal his secrets on the day of resurrections similarly hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in abu daud and tirmizi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam promised if anyone removes a muslim's anxiety allah will remove his anxiety on the day of resurrection and if a creditor allows his spy to hard press debtor allah will make it easy for him in this world and hereafter and if anyone helps a muslim keeps a muslim secret that allah will conceal his secrets in this world and hereafter and as long as anyone goes on helping his brother helping his poor his needy his orphan goes on helping his brother allah will go on helping him Hazrat Abu Said Qudri radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he reports in Abu Daud and Tirmizi that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he who clothes a naked muslim allah will clothe him with the green garments of paradise and who feeds a muslim he who feeds a hungry muslim allah will feed him with the fruits of paradise and a muslim who gives water to a thirsty muslim allah will give him the drinks of the extremely pure drinks of paradise on which will be an unseen seal hazrat abu musa ashri radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said feed the hungry visit the sick and free the captives you will enter the paradise so the key to the entry of the paradise are the have nots of the society and there's a lengthy hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reported by hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in muslim that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah had said on the day of the judgment allah will ask his bondsmen what on the day of judgment allah will say to his bondmen bondsmen o son of adam I fell ill you did not visit me the bondsman will reply you are the lord of the worlds how could i visit you allah will say did you not know that such and such bondsman of mine was ill but you did not care to visit for him had you done it you would have found me with him then allah will say o son of adam i ask you for food and you did not give it to me the bondsman will say you are the lord of the worlds how could i give you food allah will say weren't you aware that such and such bondsman of mine was hungry and begged you for food but you did not give it to him had you given him the food you would you would have found me with him and then allah will say o son of adam i ask you of water and you did not give it to me and the bondsman will reply You are the Lord of the worlds how could I give you water and Allah will say didn't you know such and such bondsman of mine such and such bondsman of mine had asked you for water but you did not give it to him had you given him the water you would have found me there meaning what you would have found my blessings you would have found my pleasure you would have found my bounties you would have found you would have gained my forgiveness by clothing by feeding by providing by visiting the sick is the pleasure of allah are we going to gain the blessings and bounties of allah are we going to get to the mark of receiving the 
forgiveness of all the sins from Allah. And these are the keys to paradise. How, how much did the Prophet Sallallahu attend to this class in his life? There's an incident of Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala and who that he was he was making tawaf that during the tawaf a person came over and he talked something in his ear and he left with the person and there was a friend with him he completed the friend completed the seven circles and waited for Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala and who to come back and when he came back he immediately asked him that Imam, what was this? You were doing such a remarkable worship of Allah and this person came to you and he asked you something and you left this worship of Allah and then and you and you went away with him? What was the matter? Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala and who said that why shouldn't have I done it? Why shouldn't I have done it? That is, he came up to me with one of his requirements. He was needy. He was he was poor. Why shouldn't I have gone with him after finding out his requirement of help when I heard my grandfather Muhammad وسلم, saying that I I would prefer I would prefer that I I go to help and I strive and struggle to help a needy, a poor, a widow, an orphan. I would prefer this to the worship I would do if I would do a takaf in the mosque of Medina for two months. My religion is just not about worships. Remember, my sisters and my daughters, our religion, my religion, this beautiful religion, is not just asking us to worship day and night. It is about the rights of our fellow beings. We need to be sensitive and we need to be careful about. And then caring and being nice and being loving and being merciful to the orphans. I remember that story which I I read in a book, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was his it was the day of the Eid, and he was coming back after his congregational prayers that he saw a young child sitting by the corner of a street. A total unknown, a total stranger wearing filthy clothes. All his hair were all messed up and all filthy with mud. But the child was crying. The child was sobbing. There could, there could not be an event in the life of the Prophet ﷺ that he saw a person who was crying. I saw a person who was upset, maybe from one of his own family or maybe a total stranger that he walks off. No, it is just not proven in his sunnah. He stopped by and he walked off to that child. You just can't realize how busy, how committed he was. The Prophet وسلم, being the head of state of Medina, being the army chief of Medina, being the chief justice of Medina, having nine wives, having the families, having expeditions, having so, so many things on the top of his mind. And then this is the Eid day, so much to be done. But then he sees a person crying. He walks, he walks to him and he asks him, what is the matter? The child just shrugs off his soul shoulders. Prophet Sallallahu then kindly starts striking his head, rubbing his hair gently and lovingly and asks him again. He again asks him, what is the matter? Feeling the loving touch of the Prophet Sallallahu loving hand, merciful hand, he looks up into his eyes, finds love, finds mercy and kindness and he, 
and he breaks into tears, he bursts out into tears and he starts narrating his story. He tells that my father died and my mother then remarried and took me to the house of my new father. My stepfather kept me with him for some days and then he turned me out. And look now, I have no father, I have no mother, I have no brother, I have no sister, I have no house, I have no food to eat, I have no clothes to wear. And he just bursts out in tears. Prophet Salavasim hugs him close to himself and he feels the love and he feels the warmth of love in the Prophet Salavasim's body and he clings tight to the Prophet Salavasim and Prophet Salavasim says to him, Oh my child, oh my poor child, would you want, would you desire that Muhammad Salavasim be a father to you? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of the believers, be a mother to you. And Hassan and Hussain, the leaders of the, of the youth of the Jannah, be brother to you. He hugs the Prophet sallallahu tight. And Prophet sallallahu holds him and brings him to his house. And he talks to Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he asks Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha to feed him, to bathe him, to clothe him. And then... From there onwards, he stays with them as a part of their family. And the day the Prophet Sallallahu death, he was crying. He was crying and he was saying, Oh, my father, oh, my father. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Raziallahu ta'ala, and who walks in, and he takes charge of this orphan boy. Remember, remember, Believe you me that the society in which the orphan children are going to be dealt with this pattern of mercy and this kindness and this, this generosity will be a society where these orphan children are not going to turn into robbers and decoys and delinquents of the society. They are going to turn into the pious. They are going to turn into the God-fearing Muslims. They are going to turn into the scholars and the leaders of the Ummah. There's another occasion. Prophet Sallallahu goes to Makkah and in the streets of Makkah there is an orphan there's an orphan girl. She's the orphan of Hazrat Hamza radiallahu ta'ala and who, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu who was martyred in Uhud, the martyr of Uhud, his orphan girl. She sees the Prophet sallallahu rahmatullahi wa and she runs up to him and she, and Prophet sallallahu opens his arms and she, and she's lifted in the arms of the rahmatullahi wa and he holds her tight close to his chest and there you are, seeing this sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and previously hearing to all the words regarding the orphans of the Prophet Sallallahu we see that there are three companions, not one, not two, three companions of the Prophet Sallallahu who come up to the Prophet Sallallahu this time and they're asking, they're asking for the guardianship of this orphan girl. Hazrat Ali Raziallahu Ta'ala and who is saying, she is my paternal uncle's daughter. She is my she cousin. I have right over her guardianship. Hazrat Zaid bin Haris was Allah ta'ala and who requests the Prophet ﷺ to put her into his guardianship, saying that Hazrat Hamza was his Muslim brother. And then Hazrat Hazrat Jafir bin Abu Talib was Allah ta'ala and who he requests the Prophet ﷺ, saying that she is his uncle's daughter and then the narrator says that Prophet ﷺ gave her in the guardianship of Hazrat Jafir bin Abu Talib because his wife was the maternal aunt of the child also of this orphan girl also because after the mother the right is of the mother's sister so this was the remarkable revolution which took place these were the Meccans, these were the Arabs who used to bury their own daughters alive. And now they are fighting among themselves to, 
to be the guardian to an orphan girl this was the revolution which was brought by the teachings of quran which were which were brought by the words and the message of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then about the poor and the needy i would want to narrate in the end the incidents of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is he he thought and he planned and intended to buy a shirt from himself for himself and he took 808 dirhams and with 8 dirhams in his pocket he decided to go to the market to buy a shirt for himself on his way he saw by the side of the street he saw an old gray white haired old woman who was a stranger a poor old woman whose back was bent sitting by the side of the street and she was crying prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam could just not pass by he stopped by this old woman who was a total stranger and helping this woman being nice to this woman being generous to this woman supporting this woman would not would not be of any worldly use to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in whatsoever form but no it's not this world it is the hereafter he stopped there and he asked the cause why she was why she was crying and she came out with a story that her mistresses had given her four dirhams and asked her to go to the market and get a few things but she had she's dropped that money and she has lost that money and she cannot find it now and she started crying again prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took out the four dirhams out of the eight dirhams which he had taken out to bring shirt for himself and he handed her over the four dirhams and asked her to go and buy the things and get back home He went to the market he bought a shirt for himself on his way back with a new shirt in his hand he came across a beggar who was not wearing a shirt and it was it was winter and he was not wearing a shirt and you know what he was saying exactly the words of the hadith which i just narrated just narrated that anybody who will who will clothe a naked person allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will clothe him with the green garments of paradise he actually himself was calling out the words of the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with this new shirt in his hand he handed over the shirt to this beggar and he was walking back he was walking back and he came over to the same point where he had met that old woman he saw that she was sitting there again and she was again crying i would stop here to comment that if if it had been any one of us we would have definitely thought or we would have definitely said that she is a professional beggar and that she is a story maker and she is a fraud and she is doing it creating it all over again to hook it up with another person but then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again went to her and asked the reason and she said that you know what i dropped and i lost and i took a lot of time finding looking for my coins and now that i have bought the things i've taken too long and now after taking so long when i get back home my mistresses are going to scold me and they might even beat me up and at this old age my old bones I cannot I cannot tolerate their harsh words their scolding and their beating anymore and that is why I'm upset and that is why I'm fearing getting back home the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked her okay I'll go with you what baraka in his time despite all the commitments in the world he had he had time to walk back home with a poor woman and he walks back with that woman to her house and he knocks at the door and he tells the mistresses the whole story and he asks them to forgive and they not only forgive they set her free because the person who was the narrator the person who was interceding was rahmatullahil alamin what 
What luck! How lucky was this old woman! Allah may make us all of us, make make us all of us one of those lucky people who will receive the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of the judgment. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma hasibna hisab yasira. Allahumma ajirna min an-nar. Rabbibni li'indaka baytan fil jannah. Rabbana la tuzay qulubana. Bada is hadaytana wa hablana min latunka rahma. Innaka antal wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ameen summa ameen Inshallah continuing our discussion of the verse number 36 of Surah An-Nisa Tomorrow we shall be talking about the rights of the neighbors, the rights of the slaves, the companions by our side, and the way we are supposed to treat the animals, the domestic animals we have. I would request all of you to keep on passing on these messages and sharing on all these uh, programs which are being broadcasted for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you with the best best reward here and hereafter. Fiyamanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.